the unemployment rate jumping to 4.3 percent. That is the highest level in nearly three years. And it triggered a rule created by our next guest that's called the SOM rule. It says that if the three month moving average of the unemployment rate rises by half a percentage point from the previous year, that signals the start of a recession. Here with more is the creator of that rule, Claudia Sam herself, the chief economist at New Century Advisors. Claudia, it's great to have you, and thanks for joining us here. Uh, as I just described, it is a recession indicator, so help me and our audience out here. On a 1 to 10 scale, 1 being as far as possible from a recession and 10 being absolute recession territory, where would you say we stand today? If I were to just look at the rule, so this is a pattern that's held historically and it's been very reliable. So the way you would interpret this rule normally is we are probably about three months into a recession. Now, is there anything about the world right now that is normal? No. And so it the, the SOM rule and many other indicators we've had of say recessions, like two quarters of GDP declines. We had that in 2022, we had no recession, right? Like we really have to think about the particular context for now. So do I think we are in a recession right now? No. Do I think that the increases in the unemployment rate and the softening in the labor market is worrisome and could we could end up in a recession in say three months, six months? Yes, I am very concerned about that. But the SOM rule is probably overplaying it right now to some extent just because of pandemic induced and labor yeah. force. We just had a lot of shocks we're working through. So there's kind of some extra now, but but we should be very concerned. So this is high up on the 10 scale, not a 10 though. Claudia, talk to me a little bit more about that last part of that sentence that you just said, just why it, it, it is different this time around. Clearly we saw shocks to the labor market throughout the pandemic and then even coming out of the pandemic, immigration also playing a massive role in some of that uptick that we have seen most recently. Right. So the recession indicator, it looks at changes in the unemployment rate, right? Because as a country, we've gone into recessions with really low unemployment rates and really high unemployment rates. So it's looking at changes, looking at this momentum, that once you get enough going, you're in a recession. Okay, so there are things that have happened that have really moved around that change in unemployment. We had the labor shortages earlier on when people dropped out of the labor force because of the pandemic that pushed the unemployment rate down really low. So we're comparing to something really low. And then in recent years, we've had a big surge in immigration and other people coming in from the sidelines, the labor force. It takes time to find a job if you're coming in from the sidelines. That does push up the unemployment rate. As long as it does that temporarily, right? And then we get people working, that's great. But so like that aspect of these big changes in the labor force that were not only big, they were fast, has just made an indicator like this that's trying to figure out the momentum more challenging than we have seen in any of the historical record that the rule was created off of. So Claudia, squaring that then with what you answered to Maddie's question, the, the chances here that we could see a recession in the next three to six months, I guess, what, what would you place those odds at now? And when we talk about maybe the likelihood here, what would make you even more concerned? Clearly it would be if the unemployment rate increases, that sort of thing. But is there anything else maybe outside of those metrics that you're closely watching that would be a bit worrisome here for the economy? And so the odds of a recession are elevated in the next three, particularly six months or so. I, it's not my base case. The reason that I see a, a path out of this, that's a, that's a good path, is we do have, and particularly the Federal Reserve, has some important policy levers that it can still pull in terms of gradually lowering interest rates. We have a really healthy economy. We're just like pointed not in a good direction. So just take a little bit of pressure off or as much pressure off as they need to. And we can get this back to more of a more of a glide path. Like the problem is not where the US labor market is right now, close to 4% unemployment is good. We've had a lot of increase in the labor force. We need to stay in this place. If we get month of month of this weakening, that's the problem. And I think the policymakers, there are some tools to help smooth that out and they're pointed in the direction of doing that. Claudia, we're hearing some commentary already this morning about the potential for the Federal Reserve to make a move before that September meeting. And we're also seeing the market pricing in a higher likelihood of a 50 basis point cut come September. What is your base case? My base case is they'll, they're going to get going in September. I, I think it's pretty clear that it's necessary. They are, the Federal Reserve, 
outside of their regularly programmed meetings to make changes in the interest rates, we would be in a crisis situation. None of us should want a crisis situation right now. And we are not in a crisis. Like this, this labor report is really disconcerting. It is not a crisis, right? What we could see is Fed officials coming out and as they give their guidance or communication, we could have them really talk up, you know, we're, we're doing, willing to do whatever it takes to make sure we don't see more weakness. And I think that could could give some support. Uh, and yet, you know, they want to be measured. They don't they don't want to go into panic mode. I think that's appropriate. And yet, just even two days ago, this is not the labor report that Jay Powell thought he was going to see. They were very clear. They don't want to see more weakening. We saw more weakening. And, and Claudia, I want to end by talking about where we are heading come November uh, in terms of the uh, toss up with the, the White House. I know that often your rule can get a little bit politicized. Uh, I'm curious what you want folks to know today who might be listening to commentary about your rule and how it could play into any sort of political commentary on both sides of the aisle as we head into November. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> like the goal of the rule was to be able to put fiscal policy on autopilot and recessions and avoid some of the politics, right? So I know that's not, uh, that's being uh, naive now, I understand. Uh, but the, it's important, like we, we don't want to panic. Again, I think there are some good reasons that, you know, this time has some unusual features. And really the purpose of the rule was to take action to if we get in a place that is not a good place in the economy, we take steps to make it not as bad, fight the recession. And in this case, I think we actually have some runway in that we're not in that danger zone yet. So I hope it spurs a conversation and a let's pay attention to the labor market and this this needs to get under control because it's so important. And the labor market's so central to just the health and growth of the economy. Claudia, real quick, before we let you go, how are you looking at some of the other data that has been coming in, more specifically some of the reading that we are getting on the consumer? There has been lots of questions about the pressure that consumers are under, whether or not we're seeing some of that material weakness play out. What do you think? Right, and that absolutely, looking at all of the data, so the SOM rule was designed to be this summary statistic that could roll it all up. Frankly, right now, nothing is a summary statistic of the economy, right? Like it's just, it's complicated enough. And so when I say we're not in a recession, it's not just me being, oh, I don't want that to happen. It's look at consumer spending, look at income. No, they are not as strong as they were before in terms of growth but they're still really solid and inflation is coming down and we can cover. So it's like, if you look at the whole landscape, we're still in a good place, but the direction of travel is a problem, but we can, I, I that's not a done deal, right? So I, I think, you know, if you look at everything, it can look pretty good, but it is easy to go out and pick, like pick out a set of data points and be very downbeat. And I don't think that's the message that we should be taking from today. Claudia, final question for you. Uh, the decrease in job levers, and you noted this in your in your recent Substack post, is now larger than it is in most recessions. If you if you had to put a percentage on it, and I hate to ask you this again, but what percentage likelihood do you think it is that if we do continue to see weakness coming into the next jobs reprint, and if we see weakness in the upcoming CPI prints before that next Fed meeting, what percent likelihood do you think we would have of the Fed responding outside of the next policy meeting? Responses outside of policy meetings are very, very rare, and they're usually driven by a m big disruption in, in financial markets, mm. right? Like in crisis. So I don't, I don't see that happening. You know, there's always a chance, and that's, but, but in terms of it being driven by some uh, macro development, I just don't think they have other tools to be able to signal. We can like move, but I, I you know, again, the message today is not crisis. Message is just. We, there are some issues here. This is not, you know, we need to get this straightened out. Someone needs to tell the market that, it seems like, Claudia. <laughs> Claudia Sam, it's great to have you, especially on a day like today. We thank you so much for making the time for us. Chief Economist at New Century Advisors. Thanks, Claudia.